Hey everybody, Gardner Raymond here from Consequence Video Designs. Welcome back. It's been a while since I've been online here to try to teach you something new. So today we're going to do a quick look at chip charts. Well, this this specific chip chart, the X-Rite Color Checker Video, uh, it's the chip chart that I use. We switch over here real quick. We can see on B&H. Uh, the X-Rite Color Checker Video, $129. Uh, this price uh, varies from time to time. I've seen it as low as $99. So uh, keep an eye out if you're looking to get one of these. Uh, what this chip chart displays here, on one side you have skin tones down the left. You have a seven-step gray scale, uh, gray, uh, black to white. Here on the left, in the center, you have white, um, 40 IRE gray, a dark gray, and a black. And then over here we have solid color, solid colors, both um, saturated and saturated on the left and desaturated on the right. Uh, and then on the other side of it, there's just a plain white card for white balance. I've found this to be very helpful and it, uh, but it can be slightly confusing to figure out what you're actually going to do with the footage after you record it and bring it into Premiere. So I'm going to show you here what to do. So here's a chip chart that I shot at the beginning of a, uh, a shoot a couple weeks ago. have it up here on the right. I just clamped it in. You can have somebody hold it. Uh, here's another shot of the white card. But we're just going to deal with this for right now. If you haven't already, open up your waveform you can find it in Premiere under Window Lumetri Scopes, uh, and then this window will pop up somewhere. Right here, I have uh, the wave, an RGB waveform monitor on the right, and an RGB parade. Uh, actually, the RGB parade is on the right. The waveform monitor is on the left. Um, what this basically shows you is these two, these two scopes are showing you essentially the same thing, but the one on the left has red, green, and blue stacked on top of one another, and you can see where they overlap, the different colors they produce, you know, some purpley. It's uh, pretty spot on here. On the left-hand side here shows your IRE values from zero to 100. Um, if you click on this wrench icon down here, you can decide what you want to see. If you also want a vector scope, uh, if you want both kinds of vector scopes, uh, there's presets of what you can, what you can show up here. There's all, there's all kinds of fun things. Um, usually what I just end up using is the waveform though. And so right now you see waveform is on Luma. Apparently I can't change that without that. So I'm gonna go to waveform, um, waveform type, RGB. So real quick, uh, you can change the parade type. Um, so you can see RGB, YUV, RGB white, YUV white. Uh, if I change these around, you can kind of see how it um, what changes here. So, but I don't want the parade because I'm not going to use that. I'm going to deal just with uh, the waveform monitor. In the waveform type, you can also see the different options here. If you switch it to Luma, you get higher um, IRE numbers. You get at negative 20 to 120, so you can, you know, bump that up, up or down if you need to. Um, depending on the type of shoot you're doing, but I just like it RGB, especially for this because we're trying to uh, get the right color balance. Ideally, you'd white balance with your with your uh, card here on the shoot, and everything should be showing up. This should show up as a white. It shouldn't show that there's more green and there's less blue. But maybe you messed up the white balance, maybe you forgot, or maybe you're shooting more than one camera and your white balance settings are just a little bit off. You know, maybe one set at 3200, the other one set at 3400. Um, or you're using different cameras that just, uh, you know, the settings don't exactly match. So shooting one of these chip charts at the beginning can be very valuable in that situation because then you know you're looking at true white and true black and the colors are matching from camera to camera. So when you're cutting to that second angle or third angle, you're not you know, visually it looks correct. So enough of that. Let's get into how to adjust this real quick. So um, what, this showing, what this is showing you here in the Lumetri scopes and the waveform monitor here is, I line this up so the shots, um, so the screens match exactly. You know, you can squish this down or move it however you want, but I wanted to line this up almost exactly so you can see exactly what this is showing you. So again, here on the left is the skin tones. You can see the skin tones stacked up here. 
then the seven step gray scale stacked up here in the center, white, gray, gray, black down the center, and then the saturated and unsaturated colors here on the right. This little scoop back here and this color over here and over here is just the background that you're seeing. So if we shot this color chart full screen, you know, it would expand to the full screen of this. What this is also showing is I, I'm exposed on the higher end here. If I had had a waveform monitor on set when I shot, which I did not, this was shot with an A7S1 um, and no external monitor. So, you know, I, I, I winged it more or less using the zebras uh, in the camera. Um, but if you have a waveform monitor on scope, you can get this dialed in exactly. So I'm slightly overexposed in the white. Um, and this, this gray, this uh, 40 IRE gray, you can see is, is coming in around 50, a little bit higher than 50. Black's about right. Um, and then this dark gray is probably in the right area. So the first thing I always like to do is uh, get my whites to be even. So you can see here green is, there's more green than there is red, and there's more red than there is blue. Since I'm a little overexposed in both, I, I want to bring, I'm planning on bringing the green and the red down to the level of the blue, but you can adjust all of them either way, um, however you'd like. So the way I'm going to do this is using the basic levels effect. So I'm going to go off screen here and you're not going to be able to see it. There we go. Let's go to, um, my effects here I already have I typed in here because it's in my favorites I use it all the time right there but you can also type in levels start to type it in here's levels drag levels onto this so let me get this back out of here so it's out of the way okay so up here in our effect controls here's my levels and you can see in the levels effect it shows your um, your value your input and output values for your overall image your RGB black white black white and gamma, and then broken out by red, green, and blue. So we're gonna start with uh, green. We're gonna bring green, this green line right here because this is the white up here. This is referring to the white up here. So we're gonna bring this green line down so it's in, in uh, line with the blue. So we're gonna come to green, and this is the white output level, I believe. And see as I click and drag this down. You can type in a number if you want, 240. Um, I like to click and drag. So let's bring this green down until it's in line about with the blue. So that looks 237. And you can already see a bit of a change in the image. If I pop off, turn off the levels real quick, there's the original. You can see it definitely has more green in it. And then here it is after just bringing that green down. So now we can see it's still a little bright with uh, the red, or still a little high with red here. So let's go to the red white output and drag that down as well. Click and drag here for a minute. And then when it's just about lined up, you can see all red, green, blue makes white here. Uh, in this instance, makes white. Um, so here's our original. Turn that off. There's our original shot, which looked okay. The white looked okay. But now that we've evened everything out, we can see that, oh, that was a green, or that's a gray wall back there, not really a green wall back there. Um, so then we're pretty good. It looks like I can enlarge this here. So now I want to adjust the black. Now that I have the whites pretty good, I want to adjust the blacks. And here, if I bring this full screen here, we can get a closer look. We can see the greens are a little low in the black values. Um, so let's bring those up and see how that matches. We might need to bring red down a little bit too, but let's look at the green first. So we go to the green black output, I believe. You will get these confused. You'll get input and output confused, and you'll know immediately which one's the wrong one. So it doesn't matter if you make it uh, make the wrong choice. Um, so if I thought this was black input, and then I start to drag this up, you can see black input actually brings those colors down. And that's not the direction I wanted to go. I wanted to bring it up. Um, black. The black levels are very. Um, very precise, so you usually only need to adjust it a little bit. So you can use the up and down arrow keys on the keyboard like I'm going to do here. So it's at zero. I'll press up once, twice. Looks like that's about right. And that looks like that even, even evened out the red there too. But maybe let's bring the red down a touch. So this, to bring it down, it's the input level. So let's press up once, bring that to one. All right, so now this shot is pretty much even um, in terms of the white looks like it should, the black looks like it should. Here's our, again, here's our original. 
You can see it has this greenish cast to it. And then here's the adjusted shot. Original, adjusted. And you can see the difference right here down, down in the waveform monitor as well. Now from here, we can adjust our overall luminance levels if we want. I usually only like using levels for to get uh, color balance. After that, I'll end up using um, the actual lumetric color here. Uh, so then if we wanted to, say, bring our exposure down a little bit, we could, you know, bring our overall exposure down. So our white's around 80. Um, how about we bring it down so this gray is where it should be around 40. So the gray's around 40, but my whites are now a little too low, so I can bring up my highlights, uh, bring those back up a little bit back up to 80 and you can you can play with these and then you can also play with your color cast and whatever you want to do again after that but it's good to start with an, uh, a clean image before you start playing with uh, something like the scopes here or adding um, adding your creative effects you know all your other stuff all your other options to this because you're never going to get exactly the right look that you want if you didn't start with the right color levels and the right luminance levels. Now let's take that off. So there's, so let's see, here's our original. So if I, so just real quick, um, let's take off the levels. So I didn't do anything, but then I added that effect with, with uh, the lumetri color. Okay, that looks kind of cool, but let's turn on the levels. So I started with an even shot and there, that's gonna make it more of a true what truly what this Lumetri effect color this creative here, this uh, bleach bypass is going to look like. So start with a clean image um, and then that's going to uh, help you out later. So as just a really quick example, uh, let's go to this effect controls. Let's get off, uh, get rid of the Lumetri color here. So we just have a clean image. I'm going to command C, copy this clip or we can right click copy um, and then here's a shot from my shoot here here's the original right out of the camera and then let's add uh, i'm going to right click paste attributes and then just the levels and apply that so it's a subtle difference but it makes for a cleaner shot. It makes it, it, it makes sure that the whites that you see are white and that the colors that you're seeing are the colors that you should be seeing. So here's our original again. Here it is adjusted. So like I said, it's it's very, uh, it, it's subtle, but it'll make a big difference in the overall quality of your final piece. So that's it. Thanks for taking the time to check this out. This went a little bit longer than I expected it to. I tend to explain things more than I should sometimes, but hopefully you find that helpful. Anyway, thanks for stopping by. Check out Consequence Video Designs uh, for some more tutorials. You can check out uh, vimeo.com slash Raymond. There's also other tutorials on there. Um, or if you ever need any work done, feel free to shoot me an email and uh, I'll talk you through some ideas. Thanks again. Have a great day.